Well, we've um, had a lot of sermons over the years on the blessings of being a mother and a father and the family and so forth. And I think this is the first pro-single uh, message I've ever given in my ministry about uh, being single and what the Bible says about being single. Did you know that 30 percent of adults in America today are single. 30 percent. 75 million adults in America are single. And 30 uh, percent, we, we, did the, we did the math on it uh, at home yesterday, and 30 percent of the adults in this church are single. Uh, it doesn't mean you weren't married at one point, but young and older like adults. And you add the children, it's even more. Uh, we did the math on our little country church, and about 50% of the adults who attend our little country church are single. Some widows, widowers, and so forth, too. Some never married. Uh, a couple of them never married, and adults. And uh, so that's a big group, 75 million people. And now we all know that the Bible has a very vi high view of marriage and family. Very very high view. But this particular text today in 1 Corinthians 7 also speaks of a very high view of being single. And it's a neglected topic. I remember when I was I just graduated from college and I got a chance to work at a rescue mission in Cordova, Alaska. And I remember my mother saying something to me. She said, do it. Do it. Because if you ever get married, you're never going to be able to do anything like that again. Do it now. You got a chance. It's easy for you. Go. Don't worry about anything down the line or career or anything. Take this chance. You're single. You've got an opportunity here that you'll never have otherwise. So today we're going to talk about the theme, it's okay not to be married. We all know it's okay to be married. <laughs> we all know that marriage and family are in a state blessed by God. But single people, it's okay not to be married according to the Bible. So we're going to give you your day. Number one, it's okay because the time is short. 1 Corinthians 7, 29 through 31. What I mean, brothers, is that the time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as though they had none, and those who mourn as if they did not, those who are happy as if they were not, those who buy something if it were that, as if it were theirs not to keep, and those who use the things of this world as if not engrossed in them, for this world in its present form is passing away. So as he jumps into the subject of being single, he lays down this root issue that the time is short. When you're young, you think you have all the time in the world to do the things you want. But that is not true. <laughs> Life gets busy and, and you run out of time. I'll do it when I retire. Oh, I've got a lot of retirement projects waiting for me. But do you know what I'm discovering? I'm too tired to do them. So don't wait to do what needs to be done. Uh, life goes quickly and your life passes away quickly. Ecclesiastes 12.1, remember your creator in the days of your youth before the day of trouble comes and the years approach when you will say, I have no pleasure in them. The family I mentioned earlier in the service, the days of trouble have come to them. And they come to us all eventually. So not only is our life short, but world history is short. World history, this world is passing away. It's getting old. It's getting worn out. Second Peter 3.10. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Uh, everything is going to pass Away. Everything is very temporary. Um, uh, I visited a, a widow who's not from this church uh, the other day for a certain reason, and she's got this beautiful, beautiful, large, large apartment filled with 
what was once the, the most popular furniture and, and cabinets and uh, uh, you know, places for dishes and, and dining set and, and, and a living room set. And I remember when all that furniture in the 1980s was being sold, that style. And, and she goes, nobody wants it. Nobody wants any of it, she says. Maybe you want some of it. Oh, no, I said, we got to get rid of stuff. We don't want anything. Everything is so temporary, so short. And, and you know, we need to live, all of us here today, married and unmarried, we need to live our lives uh, realizing it's temporary. Uh, Eric and Marin, I mean, you have just a moment of having a baby. It's just a moment. I mean, look at her. She's already just, I mean, boom. <laughs> boom, you know? They grow up so fast. Everything is so short, uh, so temporary. A lot of times when I start the day, I like to start the day with this thought in my mind. You may think it's morbid, but I find it quite helpful. I get up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, now, this day may be the last day I have. Look at, look at the young man I mentioned earlier in the service that was killed in a car accident. You know, I know slippery roads, you know, and tree, and boom, just like that. This might be my last day. My family's got all this genetics for strokes, you know, and I, I think about that. Get up and say, this could be it. So I, I got to live today well, and whether you're married or single, uh, you can live Today, well, um, you've got to do that. The, the other day, we had our annual pilgrimage to Florida. I call it the poor man's trip to Florida. We go to the Glass Conservatory. Do you remember, kids, we went there the other day? That glass building at Como Park, where all the flowers, and you walk in there, and you're in Florida. And it's cheap. Free will offering. I mean, we couldn't even have gotten to Rockford, Illinois for the cost we all gave in there for the whole bunch of us to go. And inside that beautiful place that was warm as summer, filled with gorgeous flowers, plants, palm trees, birds flying around us, I noticed there was a young lady. I don't know how old she was, 20s maybe. She was sitting, and you always see this there. Sometimes it's a younger person, sometimes an older person. A young lady in that one room there, they keep changing, where have all the wedding pictures, that long, beautiful room, and, and there was many benches all over, and she was just sitting on a bench reading a book. It was her day off, undoubtedly, from work, and she had her favorite book, but she just didn't sit home reading her book feeling sorry for herself, no. She came out to a beautiful, gorgeous, warm place, surrounded by lovely people uh, that were going through, and sat in that warm environment, reading her book and having a wonderful day. Uh, and I just thought, well, it's such a simple thing, but she lived that day well. She chose to live that day well and happily. It reminds me of a Bible verse that I share at many funerals, Psalm 90, verse 12. Uh, Teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Or a modern translation would be, teach us to realize how brief life is so that we may grow in wisdom, so that we may use our days wisely. So first of all, it's okay to be single because no matter what you do in life, it's short, it's brief, it's fast, and the issue is to live today well. Secondly, there are less distractions. Less distractions. Uh, Marin, you have plenty of distractions these days, don't you? 24 hours a day. Wah! Yes, life has changed. It's wonderful, but, you know, not so wonderful at the same time. 
1 Corinthians 7, 32 through 34. I would like you to be free from concern. An unmarried man is concerned about the Lord's affairs, how he can please the Lord. But a married man is concerned about the affairs of his world, how he can please his wife. And his interests are divided. An unmarried woman or virgin is concerned about the Lord's affairs. Her aim is to be devoted to the Lord in both body and spirit. But a married woman is concerned about the affairs of this world, how she can please her husband. There is a freedom to serve the Lord wholeheartedly if you are single. Someone went online, I post my sermons online, and uh, a particular single young lady who is a full-time missionary, we know, some of you know her, she, she put a heart by this message. Because she, it affirmed her that it's okay. She is full-time serving the Lord in a way she could never do if she was married, and she's making a great impact. A married person has to please their spouse. They have to raise their children. That You heard the children here today just starting the list of things that their mommies and daddies have to do to take care of them. And it is a big, long list that you have to do if you choose to be married and have a family. And you have to earn more money. You have to stick closer to home. And the Apostle Paul was single at this point in his life. Now, many Bible scholars feel that at one point he was married because he was a member of the Sanhedrin. And, and according to some scholars, they say you have to be married to be a member of the Sanhedrin. And when he became a Christian, when he says, I lost all things, he was also including their wife and family, very possibly. That's uh, speculative, but it's based on some good, reasonable thought. But now he's all alone by himself, and he has the freedom to do things as an apostle that he could never have if he was married. If you're single, you have flexibility you don't have if you're married. You can go places. You can try things. You can go on mission trips easier. Uh, getting higher education is easier. Serving the Lord in remote places at a small salary is easier. Um, the two of us were unmarried when we graduated from seminary, me and Pastor Craig Johnson. And there were two churches that were teeny that were looking for a full-time pastor at a less than half-time salary. And one was Cumberland, Wisconsin, and one was Eugene, Oregon. And I was originally from Wisconsin, and Craig was originally from Oregon. His mother was still living there, and of course my parents were living in Wisconsin. And, and Craig says, well, why don't you interview at Cumberland, and I'll interview in Eugene. Because I remember him saying, nobody, none of our married classmates could live on the salary that these teeny churches offer. They just couldn't make it. But we can, and we could. We were used to it. And uh, so we did. And he was called to Oregon, and I was called to Wisconsin. and." Uh, uh, and it was a great opportunity. It was an opportunity for those churches, and it was an opportunity for us. Single pastors have a little harder time getting a call. Uh, what, what did one of the seminarians uh, say just to me when I was th at the seminary the other day? said, I just got married, and they told me that my chances of getting a church are much better now. <laughs> but, I mean, there's a lot of churches who want a married pastor, and they don't want a single one. But there are churches that are pretty near out of money, and they'll take what they can get, and they got me and Craig. And it set the stage for our life. I mean, I've got my burial plots in Cumberland now. I found my wife there. and uh, But I mean, just look at the way that that worked out, you know, for me. And uh, so you're flexible if you're not married. I was thinking about missions. Uh, they were telling about the Madagascar mission in the Lutheran Free Church at one of these uh, um, meetings they have midwinter at the seminary called the Sverdrup Society. And one thing I noted was how many of the missionaries who went to Madagascar in the 1920s and 30s died of malaria. They got malaria and they died. I don't know, Sharon, you've had malaria a time or two, haven't you? But you had medicine, see? 
you, you went to the mission field after they had medicine. And, and they died. And it was such a tragedy for those who were married because they'd leave behind a spouse and children. So uh, the deaconess movement grew uh, where all these young women and then also some single young men were called to the mission field in Madagascar because the chances are they're going to die anyway. So you might as well be single. But they were the pioneers who laid the groundwork for the gospel, doing a great work in Madagascar. Single young missionaries who were willing to put their life on the line and they didn't have a spouse and children that would be left behind should they die. Um, when I was single, I had time to be the chairman of the Ambassador Hymnal Project. I, I was the chairman of this project. It took five years of hard work to put this hymnal together. And Pastor Brian Davidson, he was the uh, principal at the Christian school in Amory, and he was single, and he moved up to the parsonage. And uh, a, a widower missionary from Alaska moved in, and the three of us worked together, and then I carried on the full-time ministry plus this, and Brian was the computer man, and, and, and Oscar was helping out with visitation, Oscar Brown. We called it the Lutheran Monastery. And us three guys were able to keep the church going and keep this project going, and we put together something that Augsburg Publishing House told us couldn't be done. We couldn't do it. But it was because we were single. It was because we were single and we could dedicate the time to the project. So if you're single and not distracted from the cares of marriage and family, you can take advantage of it and use it to serve the Lord in marvelous ways. And then finally, it's okay not to be married, and this includes those of you who are widows and widowers and older too. Uh, don't feel pressured. I mean, if an opportunity opens up, great, but if not, it opens up special opportunities. 1 Corinthians 7.35, I'm saying this for your own good, not to restrict you, but that you may live in a right way in undivided devotion to the Lord. And I think this verse is a strong reason why the Catholic Church requires their uh, priests to be single and why the Orthodox Church encourages their uh, ministers to be single. Not requires, but encourages. Now, I, I, I don't know, the Free Lutheran Church is kind of the opposite. We got a strong pressure on trying to get young couples married. They call the Bible school, the shoe factory, coming in and single and going out in pairs. You know, uh, when I was single, Pastor Eldon Nelson, every time we had a pastor's meeting, I went to the church headquarters, he'd say, Tom, are you married yet? I'd say, no. What are you waiting for? Aren't there any girls up in Cumberland? Get married. You need to be married. So there was a lot of pressure the other way. But uh, Paul here says, don't, don't feel that pressure. You have got a chance to have undivided devotion to the Lord in a special way. Marriage has many benefits. My wife and family have been a great blessing to the churches we've served. But on the other hand, I put in a lot more hours in the ministry before I was married. I mean, I was in that big parsonage by myself, sitting there at night alone. I didn't stay home. I was on the road. My little Volkswagen that I drove, we were on the road visiting people, going to things, belonging to community organizations. I even took a welding class and, and met people and was out witnessing. I had Bible studies all over the place. And then I got married and I probably worked 20 hours a week less as a pastor and they gave me a $450 a month raise. Yeah. When Sharon was single, she was a missionary teacher in well, Iberia, West Africa, and she could live off of very, very little money. Same with me. And a few weeks ago, we attended a service in Cottage Grove, Minnesota, and one of the young men in her youth group that she was in charge of in Africa, uh, he came to know the Lord, grew in the Lord, came to the United States, married an American girl, and a couple Sunday, a few Sundays ago, he was installed as a pastor of a Missouri Synod Lutheran Church in Cottage Grove, Minnesota. 
And you know, you, you say, would that have happened if Sharon had not been single and was able to go to that remote place and have that youth group because it worked out, see? Um, you know, through Sharon, I've gotten to know many of the single ladies who were missionaries in Africa. They were nurses, they were teachers, they were children's workers, they were Bible translators, um, and, and, and they just gave their total life to serving the Lord and joyfully, and then they retired and they had no money. And buy Tropicana orange juice. Anthony Rossi, the founder of Tropicana Orange Juice in Bradenton, Florida, had compassion on all of these missionaries, mostly single. They had no money. Many of them had no family to rely on. He built a whole village called Bradenton Missionary Village. With his own money. And he lets these elderly missionaries live there free of charge until they die. And we got to go there in Florida one winter a few years ago, and it's like a little slice of heaven. They live there, they cared for, they serve them a meal every day, and they have a nice little place to live free of charge because he saw them giving their lives to serve the Lord all over the world as a single uh, missionary, most of them single. So don't apologize for being single. Don't apologize for being a widow or widower. Don't be apologize if you, you are not able to be married or a marriage failed and you're now all alone. Perhaps God has singled you out even for a season, even as he did with me and with Sharon for a season to just be dedicated to him and serve him in places where he wants you to be undistracted from the cares and demands of marriage and family. Uh, put it in God's hands and just say, here I am, send me. I love the verses that Pastor Mark shared. Just trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. And if you're meant to meet someone, God will open up that door. And if not, just serve the Lord with undivided attention and it'll be a great life. So don't say, God, help, I'm not married. Don't say that. Just say, here am I, send me on an adventure. And if you ever do have a chance to get married, then say, dear God, Help. I think I want to get married. Help me not to make a mistake. That's the time to cry help and make sure you're in the center of God's will. It's okay to be single, okay? My first pro-singleness uh, sermon I've ever made. I'm happily married, but it is okay to be single. You got great opportunities, and like my mother said to me, just do it. Take advantage. It's a unique time of your life. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all human comprehension guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. For more information or to contact us, please visit us on the web at mnvalleychurch.org or find us on Facebook at Minnesota Valley Church.